Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeChara, CPA, coming to you live from downtown Flushing, New York, once again for day three of the Bedrock Business Building Challenge. And tonight, uh, we're going to go into compliance, something that I know everybody gets so excited about. Uh, and, and I see my my friends down below me sitting in the in the green room laughing, and, and I'll be I'll be bringing them on to to talk about compliance and what it means for you and your small business and and uh, being transparent just like I said yesterday I have no idea how all of this technology works so I, and I don't know anybody that actually does and if they say they do they're probably lying so there'll be times where, where I'll not be able to share stuff and, and it'll look like I'm uh, confused and that's because I will be so I'm, I'm just trying to be uh, transparent there. Uh, let's go into what is compliance actually? Because it's it's the thing that people fear and they don't even know what, what the word is. They just fear it, I think. Uh, you know, the, I, ha I just got two letters from the New York State Tax Department because I know that uh, they think I owe them $25. Uh, and I don't feel good when I get those letters. And, and that's part of compliance. I think I might have filed my corporate return late, uh, but I don't think they know who I am. So I'm going to deal with that probably after tax season. Uh, but that's part of compliance. And yesterday or the day before, I get mixed up, but we talked about starting a business. And, you know, one question that, that people, nobody has ever asked me, and that's not it. And I, I think I mixed up my, my slides here, but that's okay. Hold on a second. All right. Anyway, I'll tell you what, what, the, uh, what the question is. It's when does the business actually start? When does it actually start? I mean, it, the, you can pin it down to a calendar day, a time, and a specific action. And the other question, they, people ask me the wrong question. They ask me, what can I deduct? And, and the answer is anything that's business related is a business deduction. It's, it's pretty simple. The question is who determines, you know, what a, you know, if it's business use or not. The real question is when can I start writing st st stuff off? When can I start getting some tax benefits? Because it's as soon as your business starts, okay? And as soon as it starts, and I'm going to tell you right now, all my slides are, are out of order, so I'm just going to wing it. As soon as the business starts, not only can you start deducting stuff that you never could deduct before, uh, because now you're converting it to business use, like your, you know, the room that I'm in right now is in, in, in my apartment. If I didn't have a business, I couldn't write this off, but I'm writing this off because I have a business. So when you become a business owner, you're entitled to business deductions because you are automatically considered what they call a sole proprietor. OK, and a lot of people don't even know this, you know, like Uber drivers, anybody getting a 1099. Uh, you got to fill out Schedule C on 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 your personal tax return, which is called sole proprietorship. And so people get really confused with all these different terms, subcontractors, uh, outside vendor, uh, you know, independent contractor, freelancer. If you're not incorporated, you're you're still you're a sole proprietor, and and as soon as you become a sole proprietor, guess what? The IRS wants to know everything you're doing, and it's not just the IRS, okay? And it's not an option, and that's what people don't realize. So as soon as people start a business. And, and I'm finding that most people don't realize this. Even my mom opened up in a little Etsy store. Well, guess what, mom? I'm incorporating you. 
Because, yeah, you know, it's like maybe it starts as a side gig. That, that's another thing. You got a side gig, you're still a sole proprietor. And you come under com the compliance laws of the state that you are in, the state and any other state that you're doing business in. And I, I'm not even going to cover, you know, multiple states, and, you know, because everything that I talk about is geared really towards uh, the solopreneur, the new business owner. So let's talk about, I, I'm going to go a little bit out of order here. Uh, this is just one example of all the different uh, government agencies that want to know what you're doing. Okay. Obviously the IRS, social security, because when you're a, a sole proprietor, your net profit is all subject to self-employment self tax. Believe it or not, Homeland Security, when, when you fill out those I-9s, when you get an, empl uh, an employee, that's not an IRS form, that's Homeland Security. And I actually had a, a couple of clients that were visited by them unannounced to, to look at all of their payroll records. Uh, luckily, they had them, okay? The U.S. Department of Labor. Then we get down to the State Department. And, and people, this is just a few of them. This is just a few of them. So I, I think you get the idea. Then we get into licensing, permits, audits. What are, you know, here, here's the thing. I just want to put this out there. <clears throat> I've come to the conclusion that it is virtually impossible for anybody to start a business on their own. It is impossible. Uh, it was it was pretty complicated when I first started driving my ice cream truck. If you, if you know my story, uh, it's gotten even worse. And, and right now, I have to tell you that the whole system is broken, and I have proof of it. I see it all over the place, and my intention is to scare the living daylights out of you, honestly, because there is something seriously seriously wrong. And I think that, oh, uh, there's Marissa. <clears throat> and I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I talked about it the other night with the stimulus payments, how they put my stimulus payment in a bank account that I never told them about. The first stimulus check they sent to my mother as a check. And then they wired the second one to a bank account that she never told him about, not only didn't tell her about, it was closed. Another friend of mine got an electronic payment the first time, and this time they're mailing her a check. That's just one example. Now let's talk about the state of California, okay? Which uh, when I get a new client in the state of California, I have to charge him a premium because there's a lot of extra work. Uh, I've had four cases this year, four, where uh, the state of California claimed that we didn't file an extension and my client didn't pay the required 800 ridiculous minimum uh, tax fee, okay? 800, I think in New York, it's 25. <laughs> so that, that's the first thing. So. My, you don't get letters like that when I have confirmation that my extension went through, independent confirmation, and my client has proof that the payment was made. It's a slam dunk. Listen, you guys made a mistake. One time I could see, but I've had four of them, and I don't have that many clients in California. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to bring my, uh, one of my, my good friends and, and client, uh, Marissa. And like I said, I'm probably going to mess this up, but that's okay. Share screen. Hey, I'm getting better. Hey, How are you, Marissa? Hi. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you yeah. so much for coming on. So you yeah. were one of the clients. Uh, you got a letter back in August. 840. And you know, you get letters all the time, uh, not because you do anything wrong. 
that it's normal. Yeah. And you get you get a ladder, and what do you do? I take a picture of it and I text it to you, and I say, "What do I do now?" Right. So, and I usually tell yeah. you right away, right? Absolutely. So you get back to me, and I'm really grateful because I would I would be like the way you described, like when I see something, I'm like, "What have I done?" You know. I, it's and, normal. I'm good. Yeah. And you know that's why. Particular like, thing. Go ahead. When you know, if you know my ice cream truck story, I know what that feels like. Right. Uh, so I said, you know what? I don't want my clients to have to wait to figure out what the, I'm like, just take a picture. I could look at it in like 30 seconds and know what it's about. And most right. of the time it's nothing. But this time they said you filed your tax return late and you didn't pay. Mm -hmm. So now I got to become Sherlock Holmes, go back, get the confirmation. Then you got to do your due diligence. You get the bank info, right? Yeah. And and so we get the info. And do you mind if I show people the letter that I sent? Not at all. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I've written, I've written tens of thousands of these letters. And so Marissa, so oh, I, before I show you the letter, yesterday she got a, a, a notice, like a debit on her bank account, right? What, what did it say? So I went to check my balances and my balance was about $1,200 less than I thought it was. So, but there was no, um, it didn't show where it went to. So I called the no bank. The bank right? said, yeah. The bank said this was franchise tax board and it had, she had a case number. She gave me a case number and a phone number. Okay. And how um, much was, so how much was it? It was twelve fifty three, I think. Something it took like out that. twelve fifty three. Okay, I want to show people the letter now. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. I, I might screw this up again. Uh, application window. Okay, I got it now. Oh, I just figured out something I was doing wrong. <laughs> Progress. Learn uh, by doing. No, learn by failing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. I'll be right back with you, Marissa. All right. Okay, so here is the letter because I said, you know what? This is bothering me. She called, you know, I got the information late. I've been working all day. And right before this, I said, I got to see what, you know, because I'm not sure if it's the same thing. I got to find out, is it the same thing? So I go back to my letter and, and this is what it says, you know, and this is my standard letter. And by the way, I have a standard, like, uh, IRS response letter that, I, that I'm making available to everybody because there is a, a certain format that needs to be uh, followed, okay? But basically, I tell them, in response to your inquiry, 814, I give them a copy. Uh, they, you say that we owe you $840. I gave them the printout of the bank statement and also uh, email payment confirmation. I also uh, put in there, uh, uh, and I didn't put it in the letter, but the the fact that I had yeah. my own Keep uh, confirmation. Uh, so that's that's the story. So now, hi Marissa. So now hi. what I ha now what we have to do, and it might take a year, to be honest with you, Marissa. Now I got to go back to California and, and you know, say like, what are you doing? Yeah. And so it's not just California. It's the, the IRS. It's every government agency, including the post office. I, I you know, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty. Jack, you're disrupting me right now. That's okay. Uh, I, I want to bring on Debbie now because she, she'll be a good segue into, into what I want to get into. So thank you so much. And uh, tell Jack I'll be sure. looking at his tax stuff tonight. Okay, great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. How do I stop share?
I think I didn't. All right. Hey, You're how are you? Buttons, you wind up. Uh, <laughs> how are you, Debbie? Debbie I'm Morgan, well. CPA. Debbie hey. Morgan, CPA. <laughs> good uh, to see you. Good to see you. So I feel so bad for you. Why? Because I'm in I, California and a tax preparer. <laughs> oh, my God. It, you know, it could yes. be good in a way because, you know, when, when people have these kinds of problems, they need us. Right. Uh, so what's your, you know, we've been talking, you know, on and off. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, you got me the New York Yankee prospect, which <laughs> yeah. I am forever. You know that I'm a lifetime Yankee fan. Yes. And today I just got uh, Stacy, his parents. Mm hmm. So I'm like, oh, my God, I just wanted to thank you for that. Oh, you're it's, welcome. It's strange. And the only reason why I bring it up is because she told me that the New York Yankees mm -hmm. still have not sent out their W-2 forms. Oh, really? You would think, especially a big organization like that. What are you seeing? I'm right saying most of my clients are still waiting for stuff. Right, right. I just feel like everything's backlogged right now. And we can't even file until February 12th. So it just, it's just kind of an interesting time, even as far as taxes, not just with everything else going on. It, it's really amazing. Like, yes. uh, you know, I'm like a, a, a history student. And this is, <laughs> this is I, I'm sorry, but I think this is going to get a lot worse. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so I had those four cases in California. Mm -hmm. I, have a couple, I have a couple of IRS cases where they sent notices of, of intent to levy without yeah. sending a 30 day notice without sending a 90 day no it's like hey you skip yeah a couple it's of out of control people. it really is out of control and yeah. then you can't even get on the phone with them right right yeah is no it? it's, it's definitely challenging i find myself a lot of time just calming down clients it's so like, i'm not the only one i'm no. not the only accountant this is no. oh, <laughs> i feel so much better no, i have so many like clients targeting. yeah I have so many clients that don't even open their envelopes. Like, just give it to me, or they'll you know be panicked. Like, and I do what you do. It's like just email it to me so I can see it. And a lot of times it, it's a scam or it's not real. But other times, I mean, but it's very scary to have that. And, and What's they are scary, you know, to me because I've been doing this. You know, we have both been doing this. We know how to write a letter. You know that they they have right. to respond. Exactly. But it's like it don't work. So I'm going to have, uh, you know, Michelle Cavanaugh. Mm -hmm. She was one yes. of the ones that got, she had a penalty. And then I'm going to have Mel Myers on tomorrow. Two oh, people good. had cases with the IRS where we right. had to fight them on penalties. Uh, Michelle didn't owe the money. I wrote mm -hmm. a letter. Uh, right. They still want it. She had to stay on hold for over two hours. I believe it. But it's she said, I'm not so giving bad. up. I'm not. Yeah, well, good. So, yeah, I just know that. So let me just tell people, you know, you are a real CPA. I am. You, you brought that <laughs> out. I am an entrepreneur. Okay. And I was just telling Larry Broughton, you know, he's like, oh, you're a CPA. You know how to make that. I'm like, why, why do you assume that uh, just because I'm a CPA, you know how to do? No, no. And I, and I think that this is, and this is why I really wanted to have you on because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jeff Wolf did a thing yesterday about finding the right fit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's important with everything. Yeah. So I'm not the right. Agree. I am not the right fit for a lot of people, and I know that because mm -hmm. I have a a specialty. I work with very small businesses. I love mm -hmm. working with them. You know, startups. I will not work with a not for profit. In fact, we talked about you helping yes. me I'm start like, my not? own. Network. So you know, if you want. A real accountant, if you're a company with employees, mm -hmm. is, is that your sweet spot, Debbie? Yes. Okay. Yes, nonprofit. So want, I mean, small businesses also, not not so much startups, but small businesses and nonprofit. That's kind of my area. So, yeah. And do you do financial statements? No, I don't. I'll help them with their accounting, but I don't do like reviewed or audited financials. Okay. So that's another distinction. Right. So, you know, uh, I was going to, you know, I we were talking before taxes and, and we're going to do this, but I think we need to put together some kind of like instructions for people on how to pick an accountant. Definitely. Uh, you think so? Yeah, definitely. And I think it goes both ways. I do consultation, but not so much for them to like me, but I need to like them. I need, you know, it has to gel. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And, and just one last thing that's become shocking to me, you know, mm -hmm. over the last two years, when I, because I did work, you know, I was a regular accountant and I hated mm -hmm. it. I, I just didn't like it. I like being an entrepreneur and I love what I'm doing. But that's it gave thing. me an opportunity to start seeing a lot of people's uh, accountants prior tax work. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And let me tell you something. We have a serious, serious problem in this country. Yes. Because there's, <laughs> there's a shortage yeah. of good accountants. Yes. I completely agree. I had a client show me their corporation and there was a deduction on there. And I said, that doesn't go there. And I said, just so you know, I won't be deducting that. It's like, you know, so, so, it was, so it's interesting to be, be touchy and not slam the other person, but let them know that it wasn't done right. Right, right. Yeah. I just dropped a client. She thought she could write off a $15,000 necklace as a business deduction. Oh, my. I was like, you know, I don't think we were the right fit. <laughs> because she yeah. wanted me to tell her what she wanted to hear. I would say, oh, yeah, that we could put that over here. And, you know, it don't work like that. Yeah. And because, because that gets back to compliance. Right. You know. And that was my job from the beginning. You feel the mm -hmm. same way? It's Yeah, definitely. It, it's so much less than tax planning today. Mm -hmm. that it was all yeah. about tax planning back in the day. Now it's mm -hmm. about dodging the bullets, right? Right, right. Making sure everything's done the way it should be. And I definitely having yeah. your backup. I completely agree. Okay. So, Debbie, uh, are you taking on any new clients? I am, actually. I still cool. am. And where yeah. are you located? I am in Thousand Oaks, California, so it's Southern California area. So do you just do like local people or are you like me where I do people everywhere? Um, I'm like you. I do people everywhere. Okay. Yeah. yeah a lot of yeah. times I have clients that live here and they move out of state and I usually keep them and do them. Yes. Yeah. Because they hate changing accountants. Yeah. <laughs> I've had people who say, I hate my accountant, but I can't, I can't fire him. <laughs> right. And that, that's another thing because they're afraid. They're like, oh no, they have all my records. Right. So right. what? <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, it's no. always it's always the fear. It's the fear of not knowing. Yeah, so. well, I think anything with taxes is scary for most people. It is. And I'm trying to make it less scary. Right. Same here. You know? So same here. All right. So how do people find you? Just look up Debbie Morgan. Yeah, if you can look up Deborah Morgan CPA and that's Deborah spelled D E B O R A H. All right. You can find my website. Awesome. Hopefully we'll be meeting again soon in Paris. Yes, yes, really. It's right. been a while. It's kind yeah. of crazy. All this right, year Debbie. for sure. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye. I don't know how to get rid of you, so you're gonna uh, I'll to leave the studio. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I need some train I need some uh stream yard training. Again. Okay, you were doing better I than I, I would. Okay, bye bye. I'm gonna leave the studio this. now. Bye. All right. So uh do, I guess there's no questions. I'm, I'm you know trying to multitask here. Uh, we still have time. Let me go back to the presentation. And so let me just uh, say something here. You know, I've been writing letters uh, for my clients for over 35 years. I've probably written hundreds of thousands of them. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, I've gotten a response. Now, now it's you don't get a response and you can't get on the phone with them. And they're taking people's money from people that don't owe the money and people that have small businesses. And, and, and this really irks me. It irks me. And, and I want to make it uh, clear that this, this has to end. I, you know, there's only so many accountants out there. There's only so many people that can, that can help uh, business owners. Uh, and the government right now is just spitting out these notices. I had another, she wasn't a client. It was a, the ex-wife of a client. She had a, a tax levy, uh, 
because of it's a long story, but she got a notice of intent to levy and that's not good. Uh, it means that, Hey, we're looking for your bank accounts and we're going to just take the money from you. So her accountants told her, you know, go, you got to pay the money. So she wrote a check out and mailed it. I don't think it's arrived to this day. That was like six weeks ago. And she called me, she said, what should I do? I said, cancel the check and, and do it electronically because the post office is broken. And, and that sort of thing, that'll go on your credit report, that'll follow you around. And all that was was an administrative glitch, okay? What happened was there was a divorce. They split the, the estimated payments. The IRS didn't process the return properly. So the, the whole pattern here, folks, is that the government is not processing the information correctly, and the machine is programmed to say, if we don't get a response, then the notice goes out. And that's what's happening. They need to turn the machine off. That's what they need to do. And stop hitting uh, people, small business owners, with these ridiculous penalty notices. And, and believe me, a lot of times people are late. And, they, and a lot of times people have what they call reasonable cause and the penalties can be abated. Okay, I could understand that. But these are out and out. They don't owe the money and we can prove it very easily. So let, let me get back into uh, share. And, and I know, you know, Elizabeth says, oh, you're, you're, you're serious. I am serious about this. Uh, it, it's It's... It's not a game. It's people's lives. And, and, you know, like Debbie said about the log jam, there's a big log jam and this thing is going to burst and, and it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty, folks. This is the one that I said was, was out of order. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, OK, so now we're on the real problem with being a sole proprietor. And I was going to cover this on Friday, which was stealth tax strategies. But I think that people need to start being stealth right now. Uh, the problem with being a sole proprietor is this. Sole proprietors are unfairly targeted. And what I mean by that is sole proprietors get audited. They get audited about a thousand times more than corporations. And you will never find any kind of real statistics on that because they don't want people to know about that. They don't want people to know that if you're a sole proprietor, you're in danger. Overtaxed, any net profit on a sole proprietor is subject to 15% self-employment tax. You don't have a choice. So if, if my mom, made $10,000 in her little Etsy store, she would have to pay $1,500 in social security taxes. That ain't going to happen. Go largely unprotected. You know about the legal problems, okay? You have no legal protection. But what you don't know, may not know, is that your business is being commingled with your, your personal return. That's a problem. That's a real problem. And I will show you on, on uh, Friday exactly how the IRS targets you when you're a sole proprietor. And sole proprietors really get no respect, no respect from the banks, the insurance companies, uh, anyone, other, other corporations, because they're just sole proprietors. Okay. So what are your choices? You really, and, and this kills me too, because what we've taken is something that is really simple and over, over complicated it. So if you're a sole proprietor, you just started a business, you're thinking about starting a business, you only have a couple of options on how you're gonna legally do business. Now, most people, 
25 million out of 30 million businesses are still sole proprietors. That makes no sense to me at all. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, if you have a partner, then you're a partnership, which really is almost the same thing as like being a sole proprietor because you get no legal protection. So it's, it's almost the same thing as being a sole proprietor. So those two structures are automatic. You don't have a choice. If you're doing, if you're a partner with somebody, you are classified as a partnership. You're supposed to file a partnership return. If you're a sole proprietor, you file a, a Schedule C. You don't have a choice. If you want a choice, you can be a corporation or an LLC. That's what it comes down to. A limited liability company. The problem with that is that does not come with any tax classification because the LLC was created for legal reasons and to get wealthy investors the tax benefits that they were getting from their, their partnerships. And, and it gets complicated because they... You know, if you want to invest in, in oil wells and, and futures and stuff like that, you need to have a, a limited partnership. And when you have a limited partnership, you are limited to how much you can deduct. That doesn't work for people that, that want the tax benefits. So somehow, somewhere along the way, the people that should have been be, becoming corporations or S corps are becoming LLCs. So again, a very simple, clear cut set of circumstances that can that can be very easily decided has has become. Uh, I don't even have a word for it. When you become an S corp, you reduce your audit risk significantly. I have seen in 35 years uh, three different corporations get audited. That corporations that were prepared by other CPAs, uh, and all three of them had major red flags on them. Okay, all the other tax audits that I've ever handled were Schedule Cs and individuals. OK, so I had to come to the conclusion that, you know, it's not good to be a Schedule C because Schedule C's get audited. Uh, when you're an S Corp, you're stealth. You're in a whole different classification for tax purposes. You get immediate tax benefits. You don't have to wait. OK, I'm going to cover that on Friday. You get the legal protection. You're protecting your family and your assets, and you can actually start establish, establishing business credit separate and apart from your personal credit. Okay, my friend Pat Wally is an expert at that. Uh, what about this? Oh, I can incorporate in Delaware. Well, here's the other misconception. You don't get to choose where, where you're, where you're going to be registered. It starts at the state level, where you're, where you're sitting. Where you're sitting is where you're doing business. And it doesn't matter if you're doing business on the internet because that's the answer that I get all the time. Well, I'm doing business everywhere. I'm on the internet. No, you're doing business where you're physically located because guess what, folks? The state wants to know what you're doing and they want you to pay to do business there. They want to regulate you. They want you to comply with their rules. Now you can go and incorporate in Delaware, Nevada, Texas, Wyoming, and accomplish absolutely nothing. Because what you just did is now you have a, a corporation entity set up in, a, in another state where you got to file taxes, you're going to have to pay their registration fees every year, and you're still 
going to have to register in the state that you're doing business in. Now, in the past, in the past, people, it, it was easy to get away with that stuff. It was easy because there was no technology to track everyone. You know, like I said, now the IRS is hooked right into the post office. You know, I had a friend that that uh, dealt with the, these systems, they call them legacy systems. And those are like the programs apparently that the government uses to, to connect to everything. And so many of them were outdated that her, her job was to go and convert these old antiquated government uh, systems and connect everything. Think about it. They're still not all connected yet. They're still not all connected yet. And then add things like Google Maps. I mean, it, it's big brother now, folks. You got to face it. So, uh, there's no way around it. You cannot hide. You cannot uh, go under the radar all the way. I was going to say you can't be stealth, but that would defeat my whole uh, Friday presentation. But, you know, the truth is that you got to follow the rules. If you, if you want to be in the game, you got to play by the rules. And, and there's penalties now to not playing by the rules. Let's go through a couple of other uh, odds and ends here. Uh, so I, I covered most of this. And the answer is, uh, so how you, you register with the Secretary of State where you live, okay? Uh, don't go to LegalZone because they will nickel and dime you, all of these online uh, companies. You do not have to be a lawyer to incorporate, okay? Another misconception. Anybody can incorporate anybody, okay? Now, this is a, fun, a funny one because it, it's, you know, I've seen business owners hit roadblocks and, you know, sometimes it's kind, it's kind of funny because uh, this issue <laughs> with the business name I've seen create so much fear and panic for no reason at all that people put off, they put off setting up their corporations because they're afraid of, well, my website is named this and my business is named that, but it doesn't matter. They're two different things. Your business name is your legal business name. That is the name that the state is using to identify you. You cannot have the same business name as somebody else in your state. The Secretary of State will not allow it. That's all it's for. So you could, you know, I could be Joe DeChara Inc. and still have Bedrock Business Builders as as my corporation as my name i mean Let, let's put it this way i have bedrock business builders corp okay make it simple now i can i can create bedrock accounting corp under the same name they call it an assumed name if you're a sole proprietor they call it a dba some states it's free some states, it costs as much as 25 bucks to get an assumed name. And when you get the assumed name, what that entitles you to is to take that certificate and open a bank account under that assumed name. So I've had clients with a corporation and five other business names under them. So don't let the business name get, get, you, get you delayed. The registered agent issue. Now, what a registered agent is, is a person or, or entity designated to receive a subpoena, a lawsuit, to get served by somebody suing them. 
It's as simple as that. Now, your registered agent is required to be in the state that you're registered to do business in. It can be anyone. It can be you, which is what I do with all of my clients. Now, you can go to LegalZoom, CorpNet, uh, all of these uh, different companies that will do it for you. They'll be your registered agent for about 125 bucks a year. In 35 years in business, I've had a very a handful of clients that ever got served with legal papers. Why would somebody pay $125 just in case, just in case somebody's going to sue you? <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense at all to me. Uh, now, I could do that service for my clients in New York. It would be easy for me to say, hey, I'll be your registered agent. It's legal. I can get served uh, and I'll give you a discount. I'd be stealing their money. I'd be stealing their money because all I have to do is make them the registered agent and let them be the one that's going to get served if they get served. You know, again, folks, this is all very simple and logical. And it gets me mad when I, when I see these kinds of things uh, being forced upon small businesses you know, when a, when, a, when a person opens a small business, they are automatically at a distinct, significant disadvantage. The last thing is, is the, the incorporator. And now this isn't really uh, that important to you. All it is is like, I'm, if I incorporate somebody, they want to know who's incorporating them. So I got to put my name my number, my identification, because if there's a mistake, they're going to call me. And that's happened sometimes. You know, if the, there's been times when a client asks for a name and I do a search and I didn't see it and, and it's already taken. Or there can be other, you know, miscommunications in the filing. Uh, but that's what the incorporator is. And like I said, it can be anyone. Uh, now, bonus info, I want to show you what I have here and what the value is of it, uh, because you will not have to pay a penny for this if I can find it. And I will find it, folks. Just give me one second. So the next couple of days, you know, Friday is going to be stealth tax strategies. And tomorrow we're going to be doing business with intention. I have my friend Haley Gray on to you know talk about that. On Friday we're going to have a couple of guests. We're going to have Larry Broughton. We're going to have uh, Mike Wolf. Uh, I know we have somebody else. I can't remember right now, but I do have the the thing up, and I'm going to share it with you. And these are the bonuses that, that I have for you uh, for free. Uh, we got to work out if you want this stuff. Uh, you can contact me or Elizabeth. Uh, you could PM me and I'll just uh, send all this to you. So this is a, a list of just all the departments of state. And this is where if you want to incorporate yourself, you can just go on here. Uh, I don't recommend doing it yourself. If, if you want help with it, I incorporate people, but you got links to all the different secretaries of state. Uh, this is just, I, I wanted to give people an idea of how complicated this is. In New York State, this is the uh, sales tax guide. Sales tax is the most complicated of all the taxes, Okay. It is just out of, out of control complicated. Uh, so just be careful if you're in a retail business uh, because I've, I've seen clients uh, get put out of business because they didn't know and understand 
the sales tax department. This is the IRS penalty template that I use. Uh, if you want this, you know, there's specific wording that if you have it in here, I have been almost 100% uh, what do you call it? Successful in getting penalties abated. Uh, it's something that I learned a long time ago. If you got, uh, for instance, relying on professional advice, I use that a lot, a lot when I get clients that uh, had a bad accountant. It could be some medical reasons. It could be a natural disaster. It could be, you know, there was a, there was a, a flood, all kinds of things. Uh, people don't know this. And a lot of times clients just pay the bill. And I actually have a, a, a dear friend and client that made that mistake. She paid the bill and we were able to get the money back. Uh, Marissa, who was on before, didn't pay it. They just took it. These are just, uh, again, schedules of the different uh, authorities that, that have jurisdiction over your business, whether you know it or not. These are just regular tax due dates. And I put this together because everybody said, oh, I want a tax due date. And I said, well, why don't you just follow my instructions? But they wanted the, the due dates. Uh, government publications that are, are available. Again, all of these are free. Uh, they're here for you. This is something, whenever you start a business, it drives me crazy because they want this NAICS code. Uh, if you're registering for sales tax, you need it. And another mystery to me. Now, the last thing I want to show you, which actually gets me pretty excited, uh, but nobody else <laughs> but I'll tell you why. These audit guides, these are the guides that the IRS uses to teach their auditors how to conduct an audit. So if you were in entertainment, if you were in the entertainment business and you were getting audited, you want this because this is going to show you everything that they're going to ask you for, how they want it, and it can save your, your tail, okay? There's one here for cash businesses, cash business, child care providers, construction, business consultants. If you're a coach and you get audited, this is what they're going to look for. You cannot write off your haircuts, even though Donald Trump thinks you can. Okay. And that's my story, folks. And I see Meg has a question. I think does the name of my S Corp have to be the same as my business? I want to use, but still. Meg, yeah, excellent. That That's perfect. No, you're Meg Campbell Designs, Inc., Okay, so now if you want to be the creative haven, if you want to get an assumed name, that's easy. Uh, I think in North Carolina, we did this for Haley Gray, actually. And, you know, you fill out a form, you bring it down to the county clerk and you can do business as that. And, and what that means, that means is you can actually uh, instead of having people write checks out to Meg Campbell Designs, they can write out checks to the Creative Haven because that that could be that's a whole nother brand for you. And now you have, you know, look what Meg found. So, you know, people get confused if you say, oh, I want to buy something from look what Meg found. And, and you say, make the check out to Meg Campbell Designs. Uh, I don't think that's a good way to do business. So. That's my story, folks. I'm sticking with it. I've been enjoying this. If, if you want to connect with me, uh, you can go to Time with Joe. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't really been uh, promoting, you know, connecting with me. But anybody can, can connect with me if you go to Time with Joe. And if you can't, I'm having issues with my calendar thing. So if you don't have a, uh, an available connection, all you got to do is email me. Joe at Bedrock Business Builders, and I'll make sure that we connect. So that's it. Over and out. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.